order. I, I remind honourable members that there have been some changes to normal practice in order to support the new hybrid arrangements. Timings of debates have been amended to allow technical arrangements to be uh, made between uh, debates. I remind members participating physically and virtually that they must arrive for the start of the debates in Westminster Hall. Members are expected to remain for the entire debate. I also remind members participating virtually that they must leave their camera on for the duration of the debate and that they will be visible at all times to each other and to us in the Boothroyd room. If members attending virtually have any technical problems, they should email the Westminster Hall Clerks email address, which is westminsterhallclerks at parliament.uk. Members attending, attending physically should clean their spaces before they use them and as they leave the room. I'd like to remind members that Mr Speaker has stated that masks should be worn in Westminster Hall. I, I now call uh, Catherine McKinnell to move the motion. Thank you. I beg to move that this House has considered petition 576563 on increasing water safety content in the national curriculum and it's an honour to serve under you as chair today. The number of accidental water related deaths in the UK every year is sobering. From 2009 to 2020 there were 7,000 water related fatalities and that includes almost 3,000 families impacted by fatal accidents in water over the last 10 years. Just last year, 30 people under the age of 20 died from accidents in the water. Every single one is a tragedy. The lead petitioner, Rebecca Ramsey, lost her 13-year-old son, Dylan, 10 years ago this month. Like so many children and teenagers, Dylan had gone for what he thought would be an innocent swim with his friends on a summer's day. He was an intelligent young man, a talented athlete and a strong swimmer. But tragically, he lost his life when his body went into shock in response to the plummeting water temperature, causing him to drown. Losing your child is every parent's worst nightmare, but sadly Becky's family are far from the only ones to lose their son or their daughter in this way. I know the government's written response to this petition came as an enormous disappointment to Becky and other families that I met with on Friday ahead of this debate. Ministers point out that water safety is already on the curriculum and it's true that since 1994, Water safety and swimming has been mandatory as part of the primary curriculum in England and at Key Stage 3 where necessary. But while it may be on the curriculum, and some schools undoubtedly do a fantastic job of delivering it, the expert groups I met with ahead of today's debate, including the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, Swim England, the Swimming Teachers Association, the Royal Life Saving Society and Mike Tipton, Professor of Human and Applied at the University of Portsmouth, many of whom deliver water safety lessons in schools themselves, all said the exact same thing. In practice, it's just not happening in every school, and where it is, it's often delivered to a poor standard. And it's a real shame, because I think it's something pupils are keen to learn about. One of the reasons I was keen to lead this debate on behalf of the committee is because water safety has been consistently raised with me when I visited schools in Newcastle. So many times I've asked primary school children, what one thing would you like me to ask the Prime Minister to change? Expecting to hear answers like more play parks, ice creams on hot days, but water safety comes up again and again. Perhaps because they've grown up close to the River Tyne, children are anxious to learn how to be safe in and around water. And while it's true that children generally are taught to swim at school, the idea that swimming is what safety in the water is all about is a dangerous misconception and that can't be emphasised enough. Many of the parents I spoke with ahead of this debate told me that their children were excellent swimmers but sadly it wasn't enough to save them. Like Dylan, Fiona Gosling's 14 year old son Cameron was fit and healthy, loved sports and outdoor pursuits and was a good swimmer. But cold water shock was something he'd never learnt about. While out with friends near Bishop Auckland he jumped into the River Weir. Tragically, when his body hit the water, it couldn't cope with the drop in temperature and his heart stopped beating. Jack Pullen, who lost his life in a river accident in Manchester in 2016, age 16, was not a strong swimmer, but he was with friends who were, but sadly they were unable to save him when he got into trouble in the water. The water on the surface of the river Ethero had appeared calm on the surface, but it's believed that there may have been strong undercurrents and hidden hazards beneath the surface. 
Jack's uncle Chris told me of his concern that there are so many dangers in the water that children are just not aware of. And something Becky Ramsey said about this really struck with me. She said that by having school swimming lessons, perhaps giving children a curiosity about the water, but neglecting the wider safety aspects, we could be teaching children just enough to get them killed. Water safety is about having the knowledge to recognise what a rip is, why you shouldn't go in, knowing there are parts of the beach where the tide may come in and trap you, and knowing what cold water shock is and what to do about it. It's about having a healthy wariness of the water and how deceptively dangerous it can be outside of the relative safety of a swimming pool. You only need to watch the Royal National Lifeboat Institution programme Saving Lives to see that most water accidents occur because people don't know these things. It's about lack of knowledge, not physical fitness or swimming ability. I'm a big advocate of swimming. It has so many physical and mental health benefits and it's a skill that saves lives. But on its own, it's not enough. We need to ensure water safety is also being taught in every school. I know that head teachers are tired of politicians telling them to do more to address societal problems when resources are so tight. Since 2010, schools have had to stretch declining per pupil funding to meet more and more government requirements around mental health, careers, education, and many functions local authorities used to undertake but can no longer afford. The government has now increased funding but analysis by the Institute for Fiscal Studies points out that the end result will be per pupil funding in 2022-23 that is no higher in real terms than it was in 2009-10. In effect, the government will be giving schools the same amount of money that they had 11 years ago while expecting them to do more with it. So I want to be clear that if we want schools to do more on water safety, as the petitions are asking, and I think it makes sense since all children go to school, almost all, then schools should absolutely be given the extra resources that they need to do it. So in anticipation of the Minister's response, I want to say that the petitioners know that the curriculum already includes requirements on swimming and self-rescue in a range of water-based situations. That's not the issue here. The problem is that it's not achieving the hopeful outcomes in terms of water safety knowledge and saving lives, and that's what we need the government to do something about. So I would ask the Minister this. Is the Department for Education confident that the statutory requirements ensure all children being taught water safety are being taught to a high standard in school? Are pupils really going into year seven knowing what a rip current is, how to get in and out of it, and that tides go in and out and can trap you, and what you should do to give yourself the best chance of staying alive if you experience cold water shock? If not, will the government now consider supplementing the curriculum with a requirement for children to receive class-based water safety instruction before they leave primary school. Secondly, how are we checking on progress against the curriculum? The families and experts I met repeatedly pointed out failings in the school accountability system and hoping to see an enhanced role for Ofsted. To take just the statutory requirements on swimming, according to a recent report from the APPG for swimming, in 2019-20 just 77% of Year 7 pupils were able to fulfil the required swimming 25 metres unaided. And it's a depressing but not surprising reality that the income-based inequalities in attainment that we see more broadly in the education system also affect this. Swim England forecasts that by 2025-24, just 35% of Year 7s in the most deprived areas of England will meet the statutory requirement. And sadly, the emerging pattern is that in these very same areas that local swimming facilities are now most under threat. West Denton Pool in my constituency sadly closed during the first national lockdown and it won't reopen due to the financial impact of the pandemic. It was located in a neighbourhood that already suffers from significant health inequalities, falling in the top 10% of the country according to 2009 indices of deprivation. So I worry it will not only compound the problem of children from less affluent backgrounds disproportionately failing to meet the statutory requirements, but a lack of high quality swimming facilities may also lead to more children swimming in open water, which we know is a much more dangerous environment. Despite the statutory requirement in England, in a response to a freedom of information request, Ofsted confirmed that after searching 25,000 inspection reports going back 13 years, they found that less than 10% mentioned anything to do with swimming. Where they did, it was usually only in a very general sense. So I know Ofsted would say it has to take a rounded view of schools, it's not its role to check that each statutory requirement is being met, and I know the degree to which Ofsted and inspections genuinely drive school improvement is also a hotly debated topic. 
But when so many children are leaving primary school unable to meet a key statutory requirement, and there are such grave concerns from families, campaigners and experts about what seems to be more or less a systemic failure on water safety, surely there's a role, if not for Ofsted, then for the Department for Education, in looking more at what the school accountability system could be doing. 2021 looks like it'll be the year of staycations, and I worry that we're going to see more people swimming in open water on hot summer days, unaware of the dangers. The open waters of England are a far cry from a beach in Spain with a lifeguard. The parents of Michael Scaife, who died at age 20 after saving a friend who got him in trouble, got into trouble in the water, have been part of a campaign to warn people that even on the hottest days, water can remain very cold and people will still succumb to cold water shock very quickly. I know it's somewhat outside of the school minister's remit, but I'd be grateful if he could let us know what the government is doing to promote water safety, particularly to children in this year of staycations. Lastly, I know the minister will mention that the DfE has relaxed some of the rules around the use of PE and school sport premium and updated guidance to clarify that this funding can be spent on swimming and water safety. And while I'm sure this is welcomed, water safety is not a sport, it's a survival skill and it's not an optional extra. Accidental water deaths are a UK wide problem. They're not confined to certain communities or parts of the country. It can't be targeted at specific pupils or schools. It must be set at a standard that's deliverable across the country with all pupils entitled to receive proper water safety, proper water safety instruction, just as they do with fire safety or road safety. Accidental water deaths are a hidden pandemic that have been going on for years. Education is prevention and that's been proven many times over. We have more children dying in water than on bikes, yet we have campaigns for cycling proficiency, more than in fires, yet we have campaigns for smoke detectors. Road safety education programmes have reduced the rate of road fatalities by half in the United Kingdom and the national campaign to teach fire prevention through schools led to significant decreases in deaths. In the same way, by getting water safety into schools and ensuring it's delivered, we can break the cycle by giving every child that life-saving knowledge. So before I finish, I want to mention the story of Evan Crisp from Newcastle to de demonstrate just what a difference a little knowledge can make. Three years ago, Evan and his friends went up to Beadnell Bay in Northumberland to celebrate finishing their exams. But a rip current caught hold of Evan and he was swept into the North Sea. As he lost sight of the beach, he remembered what he'd heard on the Royal National Lifeboat Institution advert. Everyone who falls into cold water unexpectedly has the same instinct, to swim hard, to fight the cold water. But when people fight, chances are they lose. Cold water shock makes them gasp uncontrollably and breathe in water, then they drown. But if they just float until the cold water shock has passed, they'll be able to control their breathing and have a far better chance of staying alive. By following that advice, Evan was able to cling on to consciousness for around 45 minutes before he was rescued and he didn't learn it at school. He remembered it from a one minute advert that just happened to have played before a film he went to see in a cinema. But he credits it with saving his life. Evan's getting on with his life and studying at university now, and I know how lucky he feels to have survived. But too many other families have lost their children and are having to live, to learn to live without them. Becky Ramsey told me of the deep sadness that she has felt over the last 10 years, watching Dylan's friends grow up, knowing she will never see her own son get married or enjoy possibly being a grandmother to his children. It's not the way life should be. Since Dylan's death, Becky has dedicated herself to campaigning for better water safety and going into schools up and down the country and other parents that I've spoken to have done the same. But I also know how tired they are. Becky has said that after 10 years of speaking to around 170,000 people in schools up and down the country, she feels that we are no further forward. They want to save other families from going through what they have, but we can't leave this at the doorstep of bereaved parents who have enough to deal with as it is. Society must carry that responsibility and the best way to deliver it is through schools. It doesn't need to be expensive or take up huge amounts of time. Professor Mike Tipton's research has shown that something as simple as a 20 minute classroom based lesson can make a significant difference and be, be retained by children just as remembering that one minute long advert saved Evan's life. There's a huge amount of readily available expertise in the National Water Safety Forum that the government could draw on 
and its chair, Dawn Whittaker, contacted me on Friday to say the forum would be keen to support the Department for Education with an enhancement to the curriculum, producing a credible and robust classroom-based lesson plan and content to support schools to deliver mandatory water safety education. She said it could be delivered by the end of the year with the support of the department. Will the Minister commit to taking the National Water Safety Forum up on this offer? Ms Whittaker is also Chair of the National Fire Chiefs Council on Water Safety and told me she'd be happy to support discussions on the inclusion of a requirement in the Fire Service National Framework for the Fire and Rescue Services to contribute to the delivery of water safety in schools. That could reduce the burden on teachers and schools and I would urge the Minister and his colleagues at the Home Office to consider that too. Water accidents are highly preventable if we just get this into schools and make sure it's being delivered. We already know what we need to teach and how to teach it. We just need to get on with it and make it happen. We owe that much to the memory of Dylan, Cameron, Jack, Michael and the countless others who have lost their lives in the water. Thank you very much. The question is that this House has considered e-petition 576563 uh, relating to water safety. And I call uh, Mr Singh Desai to speak next. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. And it's a pleasure, Mr Mundell, to serve under your chairmanship. And I'm pleased to be able to speak again on such an important matter. So I extend my gratitude to the Chair and other members of the Petitions Committee and all those who signed this petition to allow us to be here today debating this in Parliament. Indeed, this petition was created due to the heartbreaking loss of Dylan, who died from drowning 10 years ago. So I want to place on record my thanks to the tireless campaigning of Becky Ramsey and all those who know of the dangerous consequences of our waterways all too well. I send them my deepest condolences for their huge losses. There is hardly anything more painful in life than losing a child. Indeed, just over three years ago, I was contacted by a distraught father, Mark Stafe, about his late son. I then raised a PMQ with the then Prime Minister on the death of Michael Scaife, who sadly drowned in the Jubilee River in Slough, urging the government to do more on water safety education to ensure children were taught about the potential dangers of open water and the impact of cold water shock and rip currents. At the time, uh, Mr Mandel, the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Member for Maidenhead, recognised that on water safety there is more to do. Yet since then it seems like very little has changed. The likes of myself and other Right Honourable Members of the old all-party parliamentary group on water safety and drowning prevention have made representations, as have the RNLI, the Royal National Life Boat Institution, other organisations, head teachers and schools in Slough and across our country for more and sufficient resources, but sadly to not much avail. Drowning is still one of the highest causes of accidental deaths in children, with over 55% admitting that they would not be confident that their child would know what to do if they fell into open water. Even prior to the pandemic, Mr Chairman, almost one in four children could not swim the statutory 25 metres when they left primary school. And whilst the national curriculum calls for pupils to be able to, and I quote, perform safe self-rescue in different uh, water-based situations, sadly, awareness around water safety on waterways is clearly still not good enough. We must ensure that every child has knowledge of the vital swimming and water safety skills which might be needed to save their life or the life of somebody else, particularly considering that 44% of drowning fatalities happen when the victim had no intention of entering the water in the first place. Throughout the pandemic, Mr Chairman, things have seemed to decline further with much of the progress made on swimming lessons and education lost. 1.88 million children missed out on swimming participation throughout the 2020-21 uh, academic year with children living in deprived areas even worse off. Assuming there are no catch-up lessons uh, and nothing further is done, 1.2 million could leave primary school over the next five years unable to swim. 
This will, I feel, result in worse outcomes for our children later in their lives and could even result in further tragedies. Despite this, the latest from government is that they have, and I quote, no plans to review current curriculum expectations for water safety. And their abysmal plan for education does not recognise the scale of the challenge. We must hear from the Minister today concrete steps to ensure our children do not fall further behind, the disadvantage gap does not widen, and exactly how the government will reduce the number of drownings. I know we are all here today, uh, Mr Chairman, to speak because we want to prevent further tragedies and devastation for families across the UK and speak out for those who have lost loved ones. Speak for parents who have lost children in the most horrific of circumstances where in some cases these events could and should have been avoided. It's their resilience and strength that has brought us all here today. So I hope the Minister will listen to their concerns and take much overdue action to save lives. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And I now call Giles Watling. Thank you, Chair, and it's an honour to serve under your chairmanship. I'm grateful, as always, for the opportunity to speak in this important debate today. And I rise in support of this principle behind the petition. The government must review and, if necessary, enhance curriculum content on water safety. This is a change that 109 people in my constituency who signed this peti petition want to see. And I'll I know there'll be many more residents in our area who would support improvements in water safety education. Clacton constituency is a wonderful place, happy to call itself the Sunshine Coast, which the vast majority of people enjoy in perfect safety. But due to some ignorance of the sea and its habits, we have had our fair share of tragedy. In 2018, a local teenager, Ben Quartermain, was swept out to sea while swimming with friends off Clacton Pier. His body was found two days later. And in 2020, another man, local man, Paul Lee, was found lying face down in the water off Clacton Pier after going for, for a swim from the beach. These are two difficult and memorable incidents for our community, but they are unfortunately not isolated. Our hardworking lifeboat and Coast Guard teams at Clacton and Walton are regularly called up out to shouts up and down the Sunshine Coast, something I have experience of as a former volunteer. At this point, I will, of course, take the opportunity to thank all of those involved in those very hardworking teams across the country. Uh, they often work in the worst conditions imaginable and do nothing do it for nothing more than their time. Although some do receive the reward of a well-earned beer, traditionally bought by the rescued for the lifeboat crews at Walton on the Nays. And given my experience in this area as a yachtsman as well, I'm pleased that some of our local schools do provide additional water safety lessons, especially after what happened to Ben and Paul. But these are not universal across the country. And time and again, we see that visitors to our area are getting into difficulty. Unsurprisingly, as an area so beautiful and so close to London, it isn't surprising that we get our fair share of visitors. And this has been observed at this meeting tonight, and we are likely to get many more staycationists. So this disparity between the standard of water safety education in coastal and urban areas does concern me. And I believe it led to another tragedy in 2019 when two siblings from Luton died while swimming at Clacton after getting into difficulty. Now, I recognise the good work that's already being undertaken to educate all children about water safety as set out in the government's response to this position, but it's not enough. We're starting with a blank slate and we must acknowledge that many people are able to enjoy the water safety because of the content in the curriculum and the work of organisations like SWIM England. Nevertheless, as has been said tonight, there are 20, uh, was still 254 deaths in UK waters from accidental drownings in 2020 an increase of 34 from the previous year. So I believe there are too many avoidable deaths and that troubles me. And it is the young who are most at risk of drowning, according to the World Health Organization. In short, Chair, our approach to water safety education has had some success, but it isn't there yet. And there is more that we can do to protect those most at risk. So I was disappointed to read that the government had no plans to review current curriculum expectations on this. Surely we need to look at it again. Figures show that inland open waters such as rivers, canals, lakes, reservoirs, quarries continue to be the leading locations with 58% of deaths. How do we deal with that? Males continue to represent with 
78% of deaths. How do we better educate men and young boys of these dangers? Almost half of the people had no intention to enter the water, with 107 either walking, slipping, tripping, falling, being cut off by the tide, or swept in by the waves. What educational resources can be, be put in place to stop these accidents? This is what a curriculum review, review should focus on. Doing so would ease the pressure on our hardworking and overstretched lifeboat crews and other emergency services and would prevent the terrible incidents that leave such a scar on our communities and the families affected. So with that in mind, I would ask the government and the minister to consider again implementing such a review. Thank you. Thank you. I now call Neil Parrish. Thank you very much. Hang on, take off my mask. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Chairman. It's a sh pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. Can I also thank the chair of the Petitions Committee for presenting this and all of those that have brought this uh, forward today and signed it? Because you know, we live in a, a country that is not only surrounded by sea, but also surrounded many, many rivers um, from, you know, from the west coast up to the north coast, all down the east coast. And many of those rivers are extremely tidal. Um, and of course, I mean, I actually swim in a river next to me, the Parrot, when it's going out to sea. Uh, and when you actually go into that river, when the tide turns, you can't actually swim against the tide. The tide actually will take you away faster than what actually you can swim. So as long as you know what you're doing uh, and can handle it, you can cope with it. You can also cope with the cold water. But I think what's been raised by so many here today is that it's the, it's the shock of that cold water, it's the strength of the water, uh, and it's the direction of travel of that water that shocks many people. So I think, you know, we, and, and we do have a very experienced minister here uh, this evening with us of education, um, who I'm sure can find solutions, because it's in fact teaching our, our, our children to swim, but also teaching them about the dangers of cold water, the dangers, I mean, lakes and other things can also have undercurrents uh, when it's, uh, not at the moment, the weather is not too brilliant out there, but when you have a great weather, then very often uh, lots of people, lots of youngsters will actually jump in the water because it's something that they really enjoy. They might be egged on by others to jump in the water, and there's many tragedies that have been happen, have happened. So what I wanted to raise particularly this evening is about a particular constituent of mine, which is uh, Andrea Corrie, who sadly lost her 19-year-old son James back in 2005. James was actually a strong swimmer who tragically lost his life to a drowning accident in the River Thames at Kingston uh, after a night out with his friends. His family was told that cold water shock was most likely the reason he could not get out of the water. I want to highlight James's story to emphasise how serious this issue is. Uh, on average, 400 people drown accidentally each year in the UK. That's one every 20 hours on average. 44% of those who drown did not intend to enter the water. Drowning in the UK accounts for more, ac for, for more accidental fatalities each year than fire deaths at home or cycling deaths on the road. And I think, you know, if you ask many members of the public, they wouldn't actually, you know, think that that statistic was actually right. We need to do more to prevent drowning incidents around our shores and on inland waterways. Mrs. Corrie has been a tireless campaigner on this issue, working alongside the RNLI on their Respect the Water campaign. Her determination to bring positive change out of this tragedy is inspiring. We must raise awareness of the dangers of our waters so, so that more families like Mrs. Corrie's do not suffer the same heartache. This year, during what is likely to be a very busy post-lockdown summer around our coasts and inland waters, water safety measures are more important than ever. And we will be seeing a lot of people coming to the West Country in particular this summer. And we welcome them, but it's safety that really matters. However, the issue does not stop with simply raising awareness of the dangers of cold water. Education is key part, has a key part to play. The earlier children become aware of the dangers that lurk in inviting-looking pools of water, the better they will be equipped to help themselves uh, if they get into trouble. I think that there are three key things we can do uh, moving forward. 
Firstly, we must raise awareness of the dangers of British waters through advertising campaigns such as the RNI's, RNI's highly effective Respect the Water campaign. The adverts highlight the dangers of the unpredictable British coastal waters and how waves, tides and hidden currents can drag people out to sea in seconds. And we only have to you know, remember the tragedy of the cockle pickers in, in some waters where the tide, where it's a very flat beach and the tide mm -hmm. comes in so incredibly quickly. And again, you know, I don't think unless you've actually experienced really strong tides, do you actually realise the speed at which this happens. These campaigns have already saved lives, and I think we need to look at other campaigns that can also warn of the dangers of inland waterways. Secondly, we must ensure that all school children are taught how to swim and make sure they catch up on lessons missing after the disruption of COVID. And it was a point was made by others that in, in, in some deprived areas, it's much more difficult to get access to swimming pools and access for those schools actually to take children to swim. School children are required to learn to swim on the national curriculum but only 77% of year seven pupils could swim 25 metres um, unaided in 2020. A recent report by Swim England and the APBG for swimming forecast this will drop to 43% by 2025 as a result of missing lessons during the pandemic. It is vital that lessons are ca caught up on and that those rates are increased and not decreased. And I'm sure we will hear from the minister about how that can be done. Whilst learning to swim in a pool is the most first important step, we could also do more to ensure school children know how to stay safe in open water. And there is so much difference between swimming in a swimming pool than in a very fast flowing river. The Swim Safe initiative is very good for this teaching to children about water safety in lakes and in sea. This provides more practical and realistic training on staying safe in and around waters. The third thing we could do is look at how we reduce the risk posed by canals and rivers in towns. We need communities to carry out risk assessments and take steps to mitigate those risks. Local safety plans could save lives by preventing people from slips, trips or falls near water. And, and let's be blunt, Mr Chairman, where you have a pub that is very close uh, and hos hospitality establishments are very close to water, then I think, you know, without actually putting everybody off coming to your establishment, it would actually be quite nice to have something there to say, just to be a little bit aware when you actually leave the establishment that you don't actually fall in the water. Um, and if it's very cold water and you've been drinking, then it will have even greater effect on you. And I think without sort of being a complete nanny state, we just have to point out to people that there are real risks and I think it is up to some of these establishments dare I say it to actually be you know have, have some messaging there um, that, that can actually make, make people aware we need to need to install more public uh, rescue equipment along the waterways it could also mean we ensure these communities raise awareness of the dangers of such things as drinking alcohol near these spots which can be so so dangerous so in summary, I, I, say, I will repeat, we have a very able minister with great experience um, and, he, and if he can combine a strong public awareness campaign, uh, thorough and practical education for school children with a more approach to, or a local approach to water risk, we can prevent many families from suffering the way my constituent uh, Mrs Corrie has suffered. Thank you. Thank you and I now call... Shadow Minister Peter Kyle. Uh, uh, it is an unexpected pleasure to be serving <laughs> under your chairmanship, Mr Mundell, but a pleasure nonetheless. Can I start by paying tribute to the chair of the Petitions Committee, the, uh, or my honourable friend, the member for Newcastle-upon-Time North. Uh, the beauty of the Petitions Committee is it often brings into this House stories and issues which sadly are hidden under the headlines of the day. I know that she chaired yesterday uh, a witness and evidence session uh, with people who've been affected directly by this issue and I think she did a fantastic job of not only conveying the breadth and depth of the policy challenges we're facing but also the emotion and the passion uh, with which uh, the parents and the families 
of affected people would have expressed to her yesterday, uh, and I think we all benefited from that. But beneath the headlines are deeply personal issues that often result in loss, grief, and tragedy. Today's debate covers one of these such issues. The challenges people face don't always fall into a neat policy box, nor do they splash onto the front pages, but they matter. On the issues such as one of these we are discussing today, they can even be questions of life and death. We owe a debt of gratitude to the Petitions Committee for giving voice to these uh, with regards to water safety. I want to express my sincere condolences to the family of Dylan Ramsey, who set up this petition. Their courage has taken tragedy and channelled it into a positive campaign for change, so no others suffer as they have suffered. As the author of the petition writes, it will soon be the 10-year anniversary of Dylan's death. I never want you to feel the pain that I do. I am sure that all parties in this House would agree that no parent should have to experience that pain at all. Yet all too often they do. According to the National Education Union, approximately half of the people who drown each year are under the age of 15. Whether down to youth, inexperience or something else entirely, that means that mums, dads, brothers, sisters are grieving when they should be watching their family member grow and thrive. These statistics speak for themselves and they demand action. There are two aspects of this challenge. Firstly, how adequate is our school curriculum? Dylan's family argue that the curriculum must properly prepare our children for the dangers of open water and the Labour Party agrees. If we don't teach kids how to keep themselves safe in water, from cold water shock to rip currents, how can we expose them to so much risk when they explore the water alone? We expect drivers to learn about theory in order to keep themselves and others safe on the roads. Given the clear risk posed by open waters, it is unclear why swimming should be any different. I represent a constituency in the city of Brighton and Hove. It is a waterfront constituency, just as the Minister's is a waterfront constituency. In fact, the constituency I grew up in and knew very well and spent a lot of time as a child and young person in the water there. Uh, I uh, experienced the tragedy earlier this year of somebody who was a volunteer for my local party and somebody I called a friend, Gareth Jones, who lost his life to the sea in January this year. Uh, he was an older person, he was 69, but his family was robbed of a very, very loving family member. Uh, and it's very interesting that his son, Robbie, uh, a young person, said uh, just recently to the press that I grew up in Brighton from the age of eight and I've never been taught about the dangers of sea and the different tides. They were the dangers that his father was lost to and it is the danger that he as a son and a young person is now all too aware of. We in the city of Brighton Hove that uh, enjoys all sorts of variety of sea activity, uh, sometimes, as has been mentioned before uh, by the previous speaker, about sometimes people going in after having a drink or two, uh, you know, we're very, very aware of these issues, but young people in particular who are growing up locally should be far more aware of not just the benefits of exercise at sea, but also the challenges that come with it. But it is in response to today's petition that the government points out that water safety is, is a mandatory part of the curriculum for phys physical education at primary school. But if the proportion of young people dying at sea is so high, then the current requirements cannot be working well enough. Perhaps, the NEU, as the NEU suggests, Teachers aren't properly supported to deliver the teaching in such a specialised and life-critical discipline. Perhaps provision of high-quality water safety lessons is variable across the country, or perhaps the existing requirements just simply do not go far enough. In any of these scenarios, the government must be more open to reform than it has been to date. It cannot pretend that the problem no longer exists simply because of a basic curriculum requirement. The second dimension is the problem that relates to swimming ability. 
the all-party group on swimming point out that even before COVID, almost, four, uh, almost one in four children could not swim the statutory 25 metres when they left primary school. This situation has only been exacerbated by the pandemic. 1.88 million children have missed out on swimming participation throughout the 2020-2021 academic year, with classrooms and swimming centres shut to limit the spread of the virus. The implications of this are shocking. Without additional top-up lessons, the APPG suggests that up to 1.2 million children will leave primary school over the next five years entirely unable to swim. If young people are not confident with the theory of water safety and over a million of them are not even able to swim, we are risking far more of the terrible incidents that we continue to see year upon year. I am sure the ambition to tackle this problem is shared across the House, but I have to ask the Minister for more action. The Government's educational catch-up proposals featured nothing on extracurricular activities and nothing on wellbeing. Labour is committed to this issue. Our own children's recovery plan promised to invest in activities for sport to music, drama, book clubs, helping every child recover on learning, social play and wellbeing. Our plan would ensure schools have the time and resources to offer proper water safety lessons pen, uh, pending throughout a review of curriculum adequacy. What's more, it would give kids more time back in the pool, including after school. Labour wants our kids to be learning and growing in the water under proper supervision so that that 1.2 million figure can be properly tackled. The authors of this petition have identified a clear problem. People across the House and the APPG on swimming have suggested solutions. Now it's time for the government to listen and to act because the safety of our kids at sea cannot wait any longer. Thank you, Mr Mandel. Thank you, Mr Kyle. And I now call Minister Nick Gibb. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Mandel. And uh, it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship, which is a first, for me at least. Um, and I'm very grateful to the Honourable Member for uh, Newcastle North, the Chair of the Petitions Committee, for having brought forward this debate on increasing yeah, yeah. curriculum content about water safety as part of swimming lessons, and to Rebecca Ramsey, who created the petition. Please let me start by expressing my sincere condolences uh, to the family and friends of Dylan Ramsey. Even ten years later, the pain for the family will be as strong today as it was ten years ago. And I welcome Dylan's mother's uh, Rebecca's commitment and determination to help raise awareness of water safety, particularly through the work of their Do It For Dylan water safety campaign. Uh, I listened very carefully to the powerful speeches uh, from my from honourable members uh, for Newcastle North, for Slough, and by my, on, and by my honourable friends, the member for Clacton, and my honourable friend, the member for Tiverton and Honiton. Uh, Mr Mundell, the recent annual data published by the Water Incident Database on water-related fatalities, so that we must do all we can to eliminate the tragedy of children and young people drowning. In 2020, of the 176 people who drowned as a result of an accident or natural causes in England, 20 were uh, 19 years old or younger. Water safety is a vital skill, which is why it is mandatory, a mandatory part of the curriculum for physical education at primary school. And in addition to being able to swim 25 metres unaided, and use a range of strokes effectively. The curriculum states that pupils should be taught to perform safe self-rescue in different water-based situations. Data from the Active Lives Children's Survey 2019-20 uh, report says that 77% of children surveyed in Year 7 report that they are able to swim 25 metres unaided. And this remains the same as the previous year. The data recognises that schools and teachers need additional support to teach about water safety in a way that is relevant to real life circumstances and that's why the department has worked closely with the swimming and water safety sector to take forward a number of actions. The PE and sport premium can be used by primary schools to support swimming through uh, teacher training, through top-up lessons for pupils not able to meet the curriculum expectations by the end of core lessons. 45% of teachers reported that they had used their premium funding to improve the teaching of swimming since 2017, according to a 2019 DfE report. 
on the school's use of the uh, premium funding. And the department has worked with Swim England to produce additional guidance for schools on how they can use their premium funding to support pupils to swim and be taught how to be safe in and around water. And funding for the PE and sport premium has recently been confirmed for academic year 21-22 at £320 million. Swim England, Mr Mundell, has published a series of guidance documents on school swimming and water safety for schools, uh, for parents and for swimming teachers. And these include a specific guidance document on teaching water safety at key stages one and two. And this guidance document provides schools with a clear approach to ensure that pupils receive comprehensive water safety education covering aspects such as the water safety code, a cold water shock, a keeping others safe and how to recognise hazards in different environments. Schools play an important role uh, in ensuring that all pupils know how to be safe in and around water, providing opportunities for children who may otherwise miss out on swimming activities outside of school. And this is more important than ever, as children's access to swimming and water safety lessons has been limited through COVID-19 restrictions. Again, the Active Lives Children's Survey data reports that swimming proficiency differs depending on affluence, as the Honourable, as the Honourable Member for Newcastle North pointed out, with 84% of children from the most affluent families being able to swim 25 metres unaided, compared to 41% of those from the least affluent families. And the survey also reports that 23% of children surveyed took part in swimming activities at least once in the last week. And this is a 6.2% decrease in comparison with data from 2018-19. And that's why new online safe water safety lessons have been made available through Oak National Academy in response to the COVID crisis. And these lessons align with Swim England's water safety guidance for primary schools. And I'm grateful for the support provided by organisations such as the Royal Life uh, Saving Society UK to Swim England and to the Youth Sport Trust in the development of these new online lessons by sharing resources, quality assuring the content and ensuring that lessons are inclusive. Mr Mandel, it's important that all pupils have opportunities to be taught to swim uh, and about water safety and that's why the department has included a specific focus on swimming and water safety in our grant programme to increase opportunities for pupils with special educational needs and disabilities to take part in PE and sport. And the most recent programme, Inclusion 2020, was completed in March 2021. And the programme has resulted in new resources, self-assessment tools being developed and CPD lessons for teachers. And the new resources are available to schools through a new inclusion hub on Swim England's website providing high quality inclusive resources. The department has recently completed an open competition for a new grant focused on increasing um, uh, PE and sport opportunities for children with SEND. And this consortium program will be led by the Youth Sport Trust and will involve uh, Swim England. And it will include the development of additional inclusive school swimming and water safety resources and training that schools will be able to access. And the department is working to better understand specific challenges and barriers for children from black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds. For example, data from the 2019-20 Active Lives Children's Survey report differences in swimming participation by, uh, by different ethnic groups. Uh, and the department is currently working with black swimming, the Black Swimming Association to better understand barriers to increased participation and raising awareness of water safety. Uh, Mr Mandel, supporting schools to make the best use of their facilities is key to ensuring that pupils have access to high quality lessons and extracurricular opportunities. And the department announced in February uh, an additional £10.1 million to improve the use of school sport facilities. And this funding can be used to support schools to open swimming pools outside the school day and fund additional cleaning, signage and sanitation they may require in order to be COVID secure. And this funding has been provided to all 42 active partnerships across England, with over half indicating in their delivery plans that they will work directly with schools to support the effective use of pool facilities. And this includes Active Dorset, who are 
uh, focusing on children in year seven who are unable to swim 25 metres, having missed out on swimming and water safety lessons when they were in year six due to COVID restrictions. And the aim is to provide free pool access on school sites between three o'clock and 4.30 for pupils in this group. Now, I welcome uh, the swimming and water safe, uh, safety sector's ongoing work to raise awareness of water safety and the range of resources and programmes that they deliver to children and young people. And this year, the department continued its support for the Royal Life Saving Society's Society UK's Drowning Prevention Week in June. Uh, and I am pleased that with early reports that, school, that the school-focused element of the campaign was delivered to over 680,000 children. Mr Mandel, the department will continue to support schools to provide opportunities for all pupils to learn to swim and be taught water safety, particularly recognising new challenges brought about by COVID restrictions. I would be delighted, of course, to meet with the Honourable Member for Newcastle North and other Honourable Members uh, with, uh, and, and outside organisations that want to uh, help provide more resources for schools, particularly in, for example, the new re uh, relationship sex and health education uh, curriculum, uh, which has a, an important first aid element in it, as well as, of course, helping to enhance the resources for the delivery of the PE national curriculum. Um, finally, can I pay tribute once again to Rebecca Ramsey uh, for her important work in raising the profile of swimming and water safety in the way that she has. Thank you, Minister. I now call Catherine McKinnell to wind up today's debate. Thank you, Mr Mondell. And I want to thank the Minister for that response and honourable members for their contributions this evening. Um, I wanted to mention my honourable friend, the member for Slough, because I met with Michael's father, Mark, on Friday, alongside the other parents that have lost their children in water accidents. And it was an incredibly moving meeting. And I know it will mean a lot to him that he has his MP support in this and the speech that my honourable friend made today. The honourable member for Clacton also spoke incredibly powerful about experiences within his community, making the case for reviewing the curriculum. And the honourable member for Tiverton and Honiton spoke from personal knowledge and experience of this issue, also supporting petitioners' call for teaching the dangers of cold and tidal waters sharing the tragic experience of his constituent, Mrs Corries, and the loss of her son, James. Once again, James was a strong swimmer. We hear this over and over again. I would also reiterate to the Minister what I said in my opening comments, that we know this is on the curriculum. The problem is it's just not happening in a consistent way. And in many cases, it's not happening at all. And that's not my view. It's what five water safety experts from five different organisations and the bereaved parents I spoke to, many of whom have spent years campaigning and speaking in schools. That's what they all say. They all reported the same experience and they really desperately want the government to do something about it. So I would urge the Minister and the Secretary of State to consider supplementing the curriculum with a requirement for children to receive class-based water safety instruction before they leave primary school and to put the accountability in place to ensure that it is happening. And the National Water Safety Forum has a huge wealth of expertise to draw on. And as I said, its chair has indicated it's ready and willing to support the Department for Education in drawing up a plan to get it into the classroom as quickly as possible. And I'm very grateful for the Minister's offer to meet with the campaigning groups um, to, to see how we can make this happen. Um, unlike many other major public health issues, there's been no comparable campaigns on drowning prevention, but on the 28th of April this year, the UN adopted its first ever resolution on global drowning prevention, and it requests all member states to develop a national drowning prevention plan and measurable targets, put effective water safety laws into place, promote the research and development of innovative drowning prevention tools and technology, and introduce water safety, swimming and first aid as part of the school curriculum. And it also introduces a new UN World Drowning Prevention Day on the 25th of July each year. So I hope members will do what they can to join the initiatives on this year's World Drowning Prevention Day by groups like the International Drowning Researchers Alliance, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution and many others who work tirelessly to try and eradicate a problem that tragically claims so many lives but is largely preventable with the help of low cost 
interventions. So in a letter to the DfE that she was kind enough to share with me, Becky Ramsey said, in the past decade, I have sadly met with many families who have different stories, but all with the same outcome. One thing that comes across over and over again is that parents only learn about cold water shock when either trying to work out the cause of their loved one's death or at their loved one's inquest. Isn't it time to break that cycle? When it comes to safety, knowledge is power and education saves lives. But what we're missing is any universal availability of this life-saving knowledge. So on behalf of the petitioners, I urge the government to support their campaign to get water safety into schools and ensure it is delivered properly. We did it for road and fire with life-saving results. Now let's do it for water. Thank you. The question is that this House has considered e-petition 576563 relating to water safety. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes the eyes have it. The ayes have it. Order, order. The sitting stands adjourned.